Another month, another comic haul. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, comic book fan. Welcome to another monthly comic haul. These are the comics that I picked up this month that I thought were cool for various reasons. Tell me what you think about them in the comments. Okay, first of all, at Marvel Comics, I picked up History of the Marvel Universe number five. This has been a pretty cool book. If you love, like, you know, the history of comics, specifically Marvel Comics, of course, there's a variety of stories that are condensed down into bite-sized chunks. This is a uh, courtesy of Mark Wade. So I like that there's notes at the end of the book that also give you more detail about a particular story. So History of the Marvel Universe number five. Here we have this wonderful, amazing Spider-Man number 33, 2099 variant cover. So the whole Spider-Man 2099, Marvel 2099 plot that's happening. And here's Miguel O'Hara in his classic Spider-Man 2099 outfit with his holographic companion, Lila. So I got this one, really cool. I also got number 34, and this is continuing the 2099 theme. Here's the Green Goblin of the future, the year 2099. Uh, I like the art on that as well, very cool. I like this one a little bit better. More 2099 shenanigans, this is 2099. Alpha, number one. This is a variant edition. I love this cover. I love the contrast of Miguel O'Hara with his Spider-Man 2099 persona. Now, if you were keeping up to date, there was um, Spider-Man 2099 in the 90s, Volume 1. Then there was one in the 2010s, Volume 2. That went on for about eight issues, I believe. And then there was uh, Volume 3 that went to 25 issues. So I believe they're bringing back the 2099 universe in a very interesting way. The future is always in peril because of the past. And here is the alpha of it all. And lastly, Ghost Spider, Spider Gwen, whatever, number four, Legacy 54. So it's really interesting to think that they're already counting this as legacy numbers. Anyway, here's the 2099 variant, this cover. I like the outfit. Um, it's a lot more focused on black and white instead of her kind of like red, magenta, pink kind of colors that I think were cool. There's those slippers that are still there. Uh, with a holographic hoodie, I don't really love that. But the other designs and patterns look pretty cool. So I have to admit, I have not been loving the new direction that Spider-Gwen is going. I have not been loving the new name and the new plot that they're doing. But this is a cool cover, so I picked it up. Rest in peace, Squirrel Girl, with issue number 50, her series ends. And it ends just like how it began. Big final issue, only our second number 50 this year. So when Squirrel Girl number one debuted, a few months later it relaunched because of Secret Wars. And on that second number one, they had that, only our second issue number one this year. And because of the legacy numbering, this is actually, I think, like 56 or so, because it's counting the original volume and with this second volume. So an amazing character with these amazing creators that come back for the final issue, Erica Henderson, Ryan North, Rico Renzi, Derek Charm, and Travis Lanham. All the gangs here for the final issue of The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. Over at DC Comics, I picked up this amazing uh, Year of the Villain T Titans number 36. This is the uh, Garner cover, these realistic covers that I love. Just look at that detail there. It just looks so realistic. This is the one that I feel looks a little bit more computer generated than the other covers. But here we've got Crush and Lobo. So Crush, the daughter of Lobo. Uh, she's been a really cool character. I love her aesthetic a lot. Really cool. That asymmetrical haircut is totally rad. And then Lobo, the main man. The original Lobo is back, not the New 52 version. And here we've got, like, daughter, like father. Well, I also picked up the Acetate cover. This one's really cool. Let me show, let me show this to you. The Acetate covers are two covers in one. We have the clear acetate above and then a second cover below it because here we see Crush 
with Lobo, he's controlling her at the moment, and what's the result? Oh no, the Teen Titans are getting totally beat up! And um, she's totally getting mind controlled. So really cool cover. I love the red background. I love the here she comes to get you. And then she actually got you. I was a little surprised that they also did this for the back cover. This is Frank Miller and John Romita Jr. in Superman Year One. So here's Superman coming out of his pod. But then when you flip the acetate away, you have the Child of Steel coming out of that said pod. Now, I don't really think this is a great ringing endorsement. Stands out from many other iterations of Superman's origin story. Washington Post. Um, it seems like a damning with faint praise. But anyway, that's the back of that acetate cover. There's the front of this, Teen Titans number 36. Next up, Guinness Book of World Records setting Spawn number 302. The, the, the Guinness Book of World Records has, has uh, given uh, Spawn and Todd McFarlane the title of the longest running creator owned comic book in history. That title was first um, captured by uh, Dave Sim with Cerebus, and then after it got to 301, Spawn took the title and will continue to do so. So here we have the return of She Spawn, Todd McFarlane cover, really cool. Virgin cover, I appreciate that. And the back cover, previews number 303, still only $2.99. Wow, that's so affordable compared to everyone else's comics. So Image Comics is doing a good job with affordable comics and long-running creator-owned comics. Next, still at Image, we have Undiscovered Country. This is a really good book. It's really interesting. The plot is, what if the United States closed itself off from the rest of the world? The year is 2029, and that's exactly what happened. The United States walls itself off from the whole world. 30 years later, in the year 2059, a global epidemic of disease is just destroying the population. A message from the former United States goes out to the world saying, We have a cure. Come and get it. Really interesting plot. Check out my full review in my weekly VM Campus comic book club if you want to know more about it. Moving over to Dynamite, here's a photo cover. I'm a sucker for these photo covers. I love them so much. And Elvira, the Mistress of the Dark, she's the hostess with the mostess. I've been enjoying her book a lot. It was supposed to be a limited series, and it's just going on further. Props to them. Uh, it really resonated with fans. I'm glad that Elvira's back in comic book form. She was first uh, around in uh, DC Comics and then later Claypool Comics. So here she is at Dynamite, celebrating 15 years. So I got the photo cover, and it has many fine assets to its name. 50 years old, but still looks good as ever. Here's uh, the new Vampirella series, number four. I got the Art Germ variant cover. Very cool. I love the clouds and the moon and her cool pose and everything. There's a foil version. This is not the foil version, but there's a foil version of her, of her title. That I wanted to get, but this one's good enough. The storyline is totally wacky, but still very enjoyable. So I've been picking up the new Elvira book. There's also another Elvira book that's going on, Vengeance of Vampirella. This is sort of a volume two. After the one from the 90s, they brought it back and Vampirella's dead, but she's coming back to life. And she's like a more feral version of herself and the world is destroyed. All of this incredible stuff. This cover, if you haven't noticed it, it's an homage to the classic Marilyn Monroe pinup from the very first Playboy issue in 1953. I love the stark black and white and red. It's really cool how the blood dripping down her body is in the form of her classic outfit designed by Trina Robbins herself and Forrest J. Ackerman. First issue cover by, of course, Frank Frazetta. Anyway, this cover's really cool. I love the the blood waterfall, her pose. It's really cool. Then the storyline and the interior art is also very good. Over at Oni Press, I'm picking up Rick and Morty, Dungeons and Dragons, Volume 2, or Chapter 2, Paintscape. This is issue number three. I got the variant cover, the one that shows off their character stats. I love that. Here we have Wizard Fighter Rogue Rick with 165,000 experience points. So I got that cover, and I also got the other variant cover. 
Uh, this one right here is for myself, and this one is for a special gift. So, uh, pretty fun story as usual. Cool creative team, and Dungeons and & Dragons plus Rick and Morty, what's not to love? Next up at Titan, Tank Girl Forever number 8. Now the recent resurgence of Tank Girl books have only gone up to like issue 4 or 5, and this one's at 8, because they really focused on like a superhero type of uh, plot to this time instead of the other kind of disjointed ones, which I think were still fun, uh, but this one was superhero based. Interior art is amazing. It feels like a vintage comic book. It's like on yellowed newsprint paper on purpose. And the art, of course, by Brett Parson is amazing as usual. Alan Martin doing the writing. Some interesting things happen in at the end of this book that you won't believe. I got to it a little bit late, so here's Money Shot number two. I never got issue number one, but I think I can pick up what's kind of going on here. Uh, this is a totally TVMA triple X rated comic book, but it's a funny one. Their mission, seek out new worlds, discover new life, and it. So they are inter they are scientists that are traveling to different planets and um, getting frisky with the local species in the hopes of raising capital uh, to do more space exploration. In the future, everyone is totally jaded about space technology, but these scientists want to travel and and uh, and go to Bone Tone and go and go on the Bone Train to Alpha Centauri. The art is really cute, uh, very sexy. It's not as explicit as you think, but it does have a lot of swears and near nudity and so forth. Uh, cool art and interesting story. So I'm picking up Money Shot number two. I gotta go back and see if there's number one. I know that there's a second printing coming out with a black bag cover. Gotta be on the lookout for that. And this is from Vault Comics, Small Press Vault Comics. And then even smaller press over here, we have Ablaze. I had never really heard of this publisher before, but I had heard of Mirka Andolfo. She was the creator of Unnatural, that genre-bending furry comic slash future dystopia type of story that was in 12 parts, published by Image, originally published in Italy. This, I don't know anything about this, where it originally was published. And I see that this art seems to say Mirka 2013, unless that 19 is written really badly. This is art from 2013. Now, I've already started reading the book, and I gotta say I love the art, but the story, I'm not quite loving it. It's a little more juvenile than I thought. Plus, the aspect ratio of the art, it seems like there's like one or two inches missing above and below the art interior wise it seemed to have been printed at some other aspect ratio that just doesn't take advantage of the page size of american comics and therefore everything looks really small kind of hard to see anyway i got the variant cover uh cover d i believe this is a black and white sketch version uh, from andolfo there were various other creators that lent their hand and their pens to the covers. They were all really cool. I wanted to get more than one, but I thought, ah, I'm on a budget. Let me just do one. And so I got uh, this black and white variant for Unsacred number one. And lastly, I've got Usagi Yojimbo number six from IDW. A couple of anniversaries here. This is IDW's 20th anniversary of publications. Congratulations to them. And this is Usagi Yojimbo's 35th anniversary. First published way back in 1984 in the comic Thoughts and Images, Stephen A. Galachi's magnum opus of a furry anthology. This is a remaster of that original comic with more story. The original was only six pages, and this goes to a complete comic length. This also is an homage to the original cover. So I got that. Now, I previously had the Usagi Ojimbo Volume 3 from Dark Horse. So Usagi was first at Thoughts and Images, then he went over to Mirage, then he went over to Dark Horse, and Volume 4 is IDW. So here's Volume 3, reminiscent of this cover right here, which are all paying homage to the original Albedo Number 2. This is it here, introducing Usagi Ojimbo, one of the crown jewels of my comic book collection. 1984, introducing Usagi Yojimbo. And again, throughout the years, Stan Sakai has reused this motif 
of Usagi at the door who's coming to get him. So there is also another variant that is painted. I want to get the painted one. Uh, they didn't have it at my shop, but we'll see if I can get it. And so right here are th at least three of the homages that exist. So it was a really cool treat to get the latest issue of Usagi Ojimbo. So there you go. That was my comic haul for this month. I got a lot of comics from some independent publishers, some anniversary issues, some fun, sexy covers, some cool photo covers, an intriguing book about a future what if, a Guinness Book of World Records setting comic, some really cool variant comics from our favorite Titans, final issue of a series, 2099 variants, in the history of one of my favorite publishers. What do you think? Tell me in the comments what I missed, what you liked from what I got, what I should be getting, what should I be on the lookout for. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Don't forget to like and comment and share and do all of that good stuff. Don't forget to go to patreon.com slash vmcampos and think about becoming part of the VMC crew. For one dollar, you'll get access to all my exclusive stuff, such as my weekly top comic book picks that you need to be on the lookout for. At the two dollar range, I'll actually mail you a comic book in thanks. I'll leave it sign it for you. Or you can simply follow on Patreon for free, patreon.com slash vmcampos. I'd love to hear your feedback, so let me know below. This has been VM Campos, and I'll see you next month.